Welcome to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC, and I'm here with Mr. Larry Becker. What's going on, Larry? How you doing, RC? Man, good, it good. seems like I haven't seen you. I've been... I know. Been You've been pretty, all over the place. You've been busy, busy, busy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, getting ready for Photoshop world, in fact. Nice, nice. Very, very cool. Now, when you're watching this, chances are you're probably at Photoshop world. Is This is going to air... This is actually airing today. Yeah. So if you're watching live... Now, for those of you who don't know, let me just explain a couple of things for you here. If you go to kelbytv.com forward slash on air, every couple of weeks, we're going to be airing some live episodes. And you can watch all of that stuff as it's happening live. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who are watching live, welcome. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you're going to get to watch two shows at once. Then after that, we start taping. Uh, we just tape two shows back to back, and then they'll air a little bit later. So this one is going to air today, right. this afternoon. Right. So it's, a, it's about a week before Photoshop World. Right. So... We haven't talked about this, but maybe we should give away a pass to Photoshop World for this show. Oh, sure. In case anybody wants to go. Yeah, we got to do it. Right. So what I'll do is I'll give away a pass to somebody for Photoshop World, and I'll, I'll figure out a way how to be able to do that. But that's going to air today, and then the next episode will air mm -hmm. next week while we're at Photoshop World. So every couple of weeks, you might want to stay in touch. Might make sure to take a look at Larry's Google Plus page. Take a look at my Google Plus page. Right. You can find me at gplusrc.com. That's the actual address. Makes right. it a lot easier for you to get to. So, or rcgplus.com. You can use that one too. Either one of them works. Larry, if they want to be able to find you on Google Plus, well, uh, I'm on Google Plus, and I've got a, a Google Plus G Plus thing. It's right okay, there on Larry screen. G Plus. So, there you go. makes it pretty easy for you to get to us. Find out. Let us. You know, that way you can kind of be in the know as to when we're doing this kind of stuff. Now, we have a bunch of different things. We have a cheap shots thing. I want right. to talk about a Gitzo thing. I want to talk about some Lightroom stuff. Start us off. Okay, so uh, by popular demand, people are asking for cheap shots all the time. And of course, they're over at my Cheap Shots blog. But uh, here's a live Cheap Shots. Um, this is actually what the package looks like. And inside the package is this little thing. It's a little light bar. Came from Home Depot. And they're about $11, $10 and change. And even while it's sitting in the package, you can push this little button on the end and test it out. It's a little LED. Uh, for LED light. So my cheap shots tip is you don't have to do a whole lot except take it out of the package and it comes with a little mounting thing. You don't even need that. And what I did was I cut a couple of uh, strips of Velcro, the uh, hook side, not the soft fuzzy loop side, so the hook side. And all you have to do is put it on the uh, light bar here. <laughs> I'm laughing because you suck. I have this entire, I have this desperate, desperate need so, for <laughs> that, so, exactly that. I've had it for like three weeks, dude. So what's so cool about this is inside camera bags, we have that soft, fuzzy material that we move the dividers yep. around and stuff like that. And you just stick this inside your camera bag and that's all there is to it. And you've got a camera bag light. Now, these things might be um, 20, 30, $40 if you go buy a specific light for your camera bag. But this one will just stick right inside. I brought, I, I'm not gonna show you. I brought my camera bag, trust me. This sticks in your camera bag. You just slap it in there. Just give it to me now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but see, and that's the thing. Like I was talking to my buddy Jay over the weekend yeah. And we're sitting there, and he's big on flashlights. He has different types of flashlights for this, magnets sure. for that, and great stuff. But I'm like, you know what I miss? I hate going out on location at night and, like, kind of rummaging through a bag, and I can't right. find this, I can't find that. It's yours. Thank you. You may keep it forever. But Home Depot, that's where I got these. 11 bucks. They're in the lighting department. and uh, That's pretty cool. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty sweet little thing. I'm laughing because I'm just like, man. There's no end to Larry's cheap shot. <laughs> That's very, very cool, man. I like this one. I'm keeping this one. All right. Not so cheap shot, but a cool shot. This is the Gitso 5562 LTS tripod. I gave tripod. you my light, and I want to just look. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is uh, Gitso. Uh, it's, it, it literally just got here. So it's 5562 LTS. This is a brand new, brand new tripod. And... One of the things that I like about my Gitzo, the, the Gitzo Travel Tripod that I use, mm -hmm. I think it's like a 32 something, is that it's light, it's carbon fiber, but one of the things that I don't like about it is the fact that it doesn't pack into an overnight bag. So when I saw this, I actually saw this from Drew Gardner. Drew Gardner was talking about seeing this, I think at Golf Photo, mm -hmm. uh, at the Golf Photo Expo. And he's like, this is a game changer. And I was like, how much of a game changer is this? Well, this definitely right here is suffering from fat guy in a little coat 
So yeah, you'll right. notice that like that's my really right stuff BH40 head, which is like the head sure. that I use yeah, for everything, yeah. right? But this is an actual beefy, beefy tripod. And what I noticed was the, the carbon fiber tripod is great, but for this, like it feels very, very heavy. Yeah. Now, the main difference with this though, is that it's small enough for you to be able to throw it into the suitcase which is one of the things that I hated. I wanted a big, beefy tripod sure. to use, but I wanted it to be small enough to throw into a suitcase. You don't, you don't want to put it in like checked bags or something? Yeah. I, I would want to take that. You know what, on, I, I don't, I, I usually take my tripods with me, but yeah. a lot of the times like I don't want something else hanging. Right. So I want to be able to put this, and this is something that can go in a packing bag. What I would do is I would actually splay the legs out a little bit, but close put here, stuff in there. put yeah. close here. Well, you and I have both traveled on planes and had the extra burden of the extra tripod, that big tripod in the overhead compartment. It's a pain. Now here, take a look at this. It's actually six sections. So, cool. right, so it's one, two, three, four, five. Now, I will tell you this, Brad Moore, we're gonna have him do this, because I actually just learned this from Brad. Now, take a look. Right here, the difference with this tripod and why this is going to be the tripod to beat is because it has one, two, three, four, five. It's six sections. Right. So when, instead of doing this, twist, pull, twist, right. pull, Brad does this. Twist, 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 twist. Then he pulls all of them. That's the way to which roll. Which I thought was great. It's a great way for you to use it. Now, how high does this go? That's surprisingly high. I'm about 5'11 yeah. and change. And I'm leaning over. Right, so I'm take a look at this. So it's at this height. So by the time you put this on, plus your ball head, that's Plus your camera. Very sweet. Right, this is a great, great tripod. It's a wide, wide base. I'm probably gonna have to upgrade to a BH55 to carry this. But I'm also like, I'm a guy that I'm looking at video. I wanna right. play with video. So there's nothing that says that I couldn't mount a slider to this. Sure. Right, so That's you go to Cinve, get a slider, and now I have that is a, serious a nice, nice combo package. But anyway, so that's so that's the Gitzo tripod. We, we literally just got it like you know 15 the, minutes ago. Do you know the ago. ballpark on the uh, retail? 12, 12 and change, I think it is, 1239, I'm not sure. Make sure you go to yeah. B&H Photo, take a look at it there. But uh, literally 15 minutes old, and I'm absolutely loving it. I think this is gonna be really good. Very if cool. you wanna see it, take a look at it at Photoshop World. I'm gonna be at Photoshop World. Go to www.photoshopworld.com, and you can see where it is, what we're doing, and I'll be walking around with this thing. Let me show you my, uh, my thing here real quick. Let's go ahead, actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'm gonna let you watch the photoshopworld.com thing. Let's take a quick break. I'll come back. I'm gonna show you my quick tip on what to do inside of Lightroom 4. We'll be right back. Mama always said, you got to preserve the present for those in the future. I think that's what my Romance and Landscape series was all about. I shot for six days, 12 hours, and 34 minutes straight. I'm pretty tired. Think I'll go home now. Well, hi folks, my name is Scott Kelby and I want to tell you about a brand new class that I have on Kelby Training Online called Crush the Composition. Why are there so many books about composition today? Why are they all the same? If you went back to the 1940s and bought a book on composition, what do you think those chapters would be? 
rule of thirds, and leading lines, and fill the frame, and patterns, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, here it is, 2011. And we're going over the same things that we did years and years and years ago. There's a whole different concept to getting a great shot. It's what makes your pictures go from these kind of pictures that you're disappointed with to the kind of pictures that you've always wanted to take. So I invited a small, intimate, live audience to join me in an amphitheater at night under the stars for an evening that's different than anything we've done at Kelby Train. I think this class has the power to transform the way that you look at photography, the way you take images, and I think it can also be your key to getting the best images you've ever taken. I hope you'll come and watch my brand new class on Kelby Training, Crush the Composition. I guarantee you tomorrow, you'll take the best shots you've ever taken. And welcome back everybody. Thanks for hanging with us and thank you especially to KelbyTraining.com. You and I each have classes there. There are a ton of great classes there. The, the ones lately I've been spending some time in is uh, Joel Grimes has a couple mm -hmm. on, on compositing. They're yes, just he does. awesome. Yes, and he does. It, it's the place to go to learn photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, even Photoshop elements. But the, the cool thing is the quality of the trainers. And I'm not saying that because I have a class there because my buddy RC has a class there. These are the best folks in the industry. And we go out of, out of our way to find the people that are doing cutting edge stuff and um, in fact the whole reason Joel is with us is because he is really popular he's doing some really hot very uh, trendy effects right now and uh, he, he came on board with us and put together a couple of really great classes on photography and compositing and uh, another one you just saw Scott's crush the composition that's uh, yeah, we're, we're very apologetic un unapologetic about it I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who just turns around and tells people look you want to watch 11 classes with Joe McNally? You want to watch three classes with um, Jay Maisel, two classes with Jay Maisel? Yeah. You want to watch the best in the industry in one spot for the price that you would normally spend on a fraction of a seminar? Do you have to? You just absolutely have to. There's no there's no reason about it. Or Kill you can take photography and Photoshop classes at the community college. Yes. Your choice. <laughs> oh, your choice. Entirely up to you. You can do whatever you want. Now, <laughs> take now a look at you this. Have, you have something on uh, on bracketing. Yeah, and it's a, it's a very quick tip, and I've heard, a I've heard this happen a couple of times when people are going out and shooting brackets, and uh, people don't, it wasn't kind of gelling with people, so I figured I'd talk about it now. When you're using your camera and you're using it in aperture priority mode mm -hmm. and you're taking a set of shots, you can get to a spot when you're in night photography where your camera will stop shooting past a specific amount. Okay. Right. So what'll happen is you can get to a point where it'll stop, let's say at 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So 30 seconds is this limit. You can go online, you can research it. They'll tell you that it's because of the sensor, they don't want it to get too hot, it's a limitation of the camera, what have you, whatever it is. The thing to keep in mind here is work or working around that, right? And a lot of times people are like, well, I keep getting to 30 seconds. Let me show you what it looks like. This is a shot that I did at the Tampa Theater. I mean, uh, not the Tampa Theater, University of Tampa. So here's one shot. I wanted to do these brackets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take a look at, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's a problem. Now, I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, what, what didn't change? I wanted it to blow out more. I wanted it to blow out more. I wanted some more of that detail. Well, when I went back over here, if you take a look at this one section here, it shows five, six, and seven, right? So it goes six, 13, and I'm looking at this spot right here, 25, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. So you got to that limit. So I'm sitting there and I'm going, uh, what do I do, right? How do I get those stops of exposure that I'm looking for when I'm at 30? Well, the reason that that happened is because I got overzealous. Take a look at what my F stop is right here at the very, very top, F13. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to shoot F13. So if you're out there at night and you're trying to capture a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of the times people try to do it to do F22 so that they can do starbursts sure. or so that they could drag something so they can have really, really long exposures. Mm -hmm. You're gonna run into this wall and what's going to happen is you're gonna spend all of that time waiting on exposures and you're gonna realize that you're not getting anything out of it. So this is 36, this is 30, 60, 90, probably 120 seconds. If that you're out there 13. doing night exposures, 
that can add up. You yeah. can spend the better part of an hour before you figure out, you know what, I'm not getting anything. Right. So what I tell people is adjust. All you have to do is just adjust your aperture. Take your aperture down, maybe you're trying to grab too much, you're mm -hmm. trying to slow down so much that you're hitting the limit of the camera. So bring your aperture down. There's no reason I should have been shooting this at f13. I could have just as well shot this at f8. Okay. And been fine. You know, edge sharpness and things like that. I was far enough. Mm -hmm. Everything was long enough that I was going to get a decent amount of sharpness. So when I moved to f8, there's f8. Mm -hmm. So now watch my exposures. 1.6, 1.3, 2.5, 5, 10, 20, 20. There's my 30. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now I have the range that I was looking for. This one is the most overexposed. This one is the most overexposed. That's what it looked like when I was at F13. That's what it looked like when I was at F8. And there was no change in your sharpness because of your distance from the subject. Right, so I didn't have to worry about that. So when you see that you start hitting that limit, either up your ISO or change your aperture mm -hmm. to, take, to, to take that stuff into account. Very cool, very cool. And that way you can get your full range of exposures for your HDR work. Right. Now, let's do this. Let's take a quick break to Matt, because Matt, even though he's not here, has something a little special for us. Hey everybody, Matt Kloskowski here with Mark Subin from Nikon Professional Services. Welcome, Mark. Matt, thanks for having us here. How's it going, man? Oh, it's great. Exciting stuff going on. Oh, it's amazing. It's just uh, a great time to be working yeah. for Nikon. <laughs> it's cool stuff. <laughs> so uh, so Mark is here from, from Nikon, and uh, one of the things that, that we've kind of been looking at while he's here is the D4. And the D4 has actually got some new features in it um, when you use the wireless transmitter to get your photos from the camera over to the computer. And also what we're going to show in there is kind of how you can get Lightroom sure. into the mix. Sure. We're going to talk about how to get, get your pictures in the Lightroom. There's a number of different ways, but this one's going to be using the built-in web server in the camera. Now we can do this with the WT5, but you don't necessarily need this device. Mm -hmm. You could plug directly into the Ethernet port into your network, yep. your laptop, or wherever you want to download your pictures with, but and really... I, well, I was going to jump in there really quick if I could, because I think I think some people would wonder out there, because Lightroom has tethering solutions for, you know, included within Lightroom. Sure. So so this is, this is kind of taking advantage, because when you tether into Lightroom, you're tethered right into Lightroom. Lightroom's up, you're looking at Lightroom, that's the only thing that you're going to see, that photo, and you're the only person that's going to see it, where when we use this solution, now there's a little. Now other people can start to sure, see this sure. too, this and that's, used, I think that's where you might want to use it. Used this. in a group environment or yeah. in a location where you don't have the ability to tether. Maybe you're working where the computer and the camera just aren't physically close to each other. Exactly. So WT5 is a great select, uh, solution for this. Of course, you have to be on a wireless network. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're using your studio wireless, or you could use a. Uh, Airport Extreme or MiFi Mi or something like that. Perfect. But in this case, you can also do it wireless to your computer. So we're showing how you can uh, basically get the images out of the camera into the computer using your web browser. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're using Safari. And what we're able to do with Safari is basically browse the camera. We can, of course, control and do other things, but in this case, we're just going to browse. So I'm just going to take a few shots of you here. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Just take a few shots. And, of course, I get the pictures on the back of my camera, but the computer's going to actually look at the camera through a web page interface, and it's going to push them to the, the latest pictures to the top. In this case, we'll go here, and we can see... Okay, I got a picture of it. It's a little overexposed, so maybe I want to go in here and make an adjustment. I'd, I'd underexpose it. Okay, there we go. So now it's going to push the latest pictures to the top. We'll have a, a picture to choose from. And what we've done in this case of Safari is we've told Safari to direct the picture. Because right now, we're, this is a web page. It's as if you would go on the Internet and look at pictures. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hit download. When we hit download, Safari actually initiates the download and puts it into a download folder, mm -hmm. which we've actually told Lightroom to watch. So, and that's case, the key to all this yes. is, is Lightroom has to watch that folder for when that photo gets in right. there. That, right. that okay. way it triggers the event. In this case, uh, my Lightroom will have the latest picture and there it is. So Cool. Real quick, and, and just so we can show everybody out there just in case they haven't seen it, if you're inside of Lightroom, where do you set up that, that folder? Uh, in, inside Lightroom, you would come in here, and uh, one of the features we're using is the auto import. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is the tethering feature, but yeah. in this case, we're going to do the auto import settings, and you would tell it which folder to watch. In this case, I have a, a picture folder with the MPS Camera 1 in it, and that's the folder it's going to look for yeah. pictures in. And that's perfect, because I think kind of what we alluded to earlier was if you're right next to your laptop and you're tethered to your laptop and you're the only one looking, 
then maybe Lightroom tethered capture is the way to go. Sure. But if you're in a group environment, if you want more people to see this, and like you said, if you're not right next to your laptop, you still want to get your photos into Lightroom for who's ever at the laptop, this is a really good solution. Yeah, it's a great way to quickly get it there. And then they don't have to take in everything. They can go through and pick out the high moments of the photo shoot itself. Awesome, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you, uh, you coming by and uh, telling everybody about that. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll talk you to you again hours. soon. That was pretty cool. It's, you know, it's always nice when the guys come by and from Nikon or, or Canon or whoever. I had that camera glued to my hand. <laughs> I sat there and I was just like, do not take it away. I, know. I just want you to keep it. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's been, it's been pre like, we pre-ordered it here. So there's a bunch of them kind of floating in wherever it is that they do in production. At one point, we'll see it. I'm sure we'll see it somewhere. But uh, I, I'm, I'm getting rid of my D3S. I didn't think I was going to. I gotta tell you, I didn't think I was going to. I was gonna just That's, hold just on to a, it. It's just such a great camera. The D3S for me has been like the camera, but mm -hmm. the movie mode, right, being able to shoot movies with a D800, D4, there's such a conundrum. It, it's, it's a very frustrating place in my head right now. <laughs> um, we got it. We got to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to give away some stuff. That's right. We're going to give away some stuff and uh, give you a photographer site to watch. So we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Jack Wisnicki, and I want to talk about a very serious subject photographing children. And I tell a lot of secrets about how to get good reactions from kids, how to have kids look like kids. We have them jumping and going and twirling and doing a lot of fun things to get the kids to look like kids. You'll know what to do if a kid shows up with a green tongue. It was a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. Have you ever wished that you could have direct access to the world's top pro photographers, Photoshop experts, and creative minds? With KelbyTraining.com, that wish is only a few clicks away. Hi, Adam. Dude, I think you are really gonna love this class I have for you today. Our training style is very casual. It's like having your own personal instructor teaching you today's most sought after techniques, step by step, from start to finish whether it's on location or in studio. It's easy and conversational, unlimited, 24 hour a day access to hundreds of exclusive classes from the world's top pros. A subscription to KelbyTraining.com is a must have for photographers, graphic designers, anyone that's serious about taking their creative skills to the next level. Hey, if you ever need any help, just come back online at KelbyTraining.com. I'm just one click away. Take care. Subscribe today. Visit KelbyTraining.com for more information. <laughs> Welcome back to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. Mr. Larry Becker. RC. So, uh, a couple things I want you to take a look at. Uh, now, here's, before we go anywhere, let me show you something else. We are talking about this tripod, right? So this gets, so it's a six section tripod. Now, I wanted to kind of do a combination of answering some stuff that was on Google Plus, right? Because we just kind of, I just threw it up on my Google Plus page and I said, all right, let's, let's see what happens. So we have Chris Corsell and Anthony Torres that was talking about legs and legs being an issue. Whether or not the more legs or the less legs whether or not it would actually be more stable, or less stable, or more prone to breakage, less prone to breakage. Um, I've never had a problem with a Gitzo product. Mm -hmm. That said, I would never think that Gitzo would produce something at that price point that would be something that would break. But the best thing for me to do is to actually test it. So I'm gonna spend some time over the next couple of weeks kind of banging it out rather than doing tech specs. Just stick around, take, take a look at the Google Plus page, make sure you come back on D-Town. We'll be sure to kind of kick it, and if it breaks, I'll be the first person to tell you. But it doesn't, I mean, it feels absolutely rock solid. It's like a tank. It actually, one of the things that threw me off is that when it's extended like this, it doesn't feel very, very heavy. But when it's collapsed, because it's so dense, it felt very, very beefy. And this is a big puppy. And let me just show you something. This is a picture of it. Here's on my Google Plus, because it just updated to my phone. This is a picture of it with Pete in the office. That's when we got mm -hmm. it. All right. Now, Pete's 6'4". Now, if you take a look, that's it, extended. Yeah. So, it, it, size-wise, it's actually pretty good. 
So I, I'm excited to play with it. I think it's going to be very, very good. Now, let me do this. I want to give you also a website to take a look at. Tanya Rocha. I want to say it's Rochad or Rocha. I don't know. I apologize. That said, <laughs> she has phenomenal, phenomenal work. So she does uh, photography. She does illustration. She mm -hmm. does painting kind of stuff. Beautiful and she stuff. puts all of these things together in just phenomenal, phenomenal ways. And Scott turned me on to her. He was actually talking about her on the grid. I was talking about the work that she does and how it takes her hours. I think at one point he said something like 160 hours for some of the things that she creates on here with, you know, part illustration, part compositing, part sure. photography. Just amazing, amazing work. Tanya, you, you have got a phenomenal site. Congratulations on all of that work because it's just, it's so envious. That's that. Bask on that. That's beautiful. Let's just look. I was sitting there doing the commercial break, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I know. But all right, so we got to give away some stuff. You have a special giveaway, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, that's right. Take a look at this. I'm going to go over here to Photoshop World because I appreciate that all of you guys have jumped on on Google Plus and started commenting. I say, hey, listen, we don't have an all-in-air chat thing, mm -hmm. but if you guys want to comment, you can go ahead and comment on the Google Plus thing. So just kind of some shout-outs. Anthony Torres, what's up? Javier, what's up? Uh, Matt Anderson is there. He's going to be here in three weeks. Matt Anderson has got a great website called commercialfineart.com. Mm -hmm. Beautiful landscapes. But anyway, I wanted to give away Rob, Rob Herrera. Rob Herrera is here every week. He's a buddy. We've seen him around. We, we wanted to give away a Photoshop pass. Right. So I said, you know what, let's give it to somebody in the chat. Well, and we would have done it for the show, except there's just not time. We can't do it and have people put in comments. Now, you guys are going to have a chance to win these prizes. Right. And we're but Rob do that. Herrera... You're going to Photoshop World. So <laughs> you want to go, you probably don't know, right? I'm glad they didn't refresh. I'm like, oh my God. But if you want to go to Photoshop World, there you go. Now's your chance. Okay, now the rest of you, the way that you do this, <laughs> this is all over the place. The uh, the live feed is at uh, Kelby on Air or KelbyTV.com slash on air. And you might be watching us through YouTube or any number of places, but if you go to KelbyTV.com slash DTown TV and you comment there. That's the place to do it mm -hmm. to get entered for the contest. This week, the contest, we've got a couple things that we're giving away. We're giving away an eye stabilizer. It's a, it's a cool little grippy tripod. You guys have seen these. It, uh, it has articulated little legs, or you can have them straight. And it's got a little miniature ball head, but it's there to hold your iPhone. Do you know how much use this thing is getting around the office? Yeah, I've Pe got one. I love it. People use it for their camera. You were saying Scott uses it when he does presentations. Right. He runs his presentation clock on it. Right. And I, 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 I carry mine in my travel bag, and I found myself using it every once in a while if I wanted to take a shot that, that uh, I wanted the tripod for, but I also use it as my nightstand clock when I travel. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know the nightstand clock thing. I actually took mine, and I taped my webcam. Uh -huh. to it, <laughs> so I took gaff tape and I just taped it because, so that I wanted to have the webcam in my office and I wanted it exactly so. I could use like six of these, <laughs> but we're but giving we're away one, one of away those. Anyway. You can have this one. You'll, you'll find that you're gonna want more. And speaking of six, <gasps> the see, perfect, see? Per yeah, that's called a segue. Set uh, it up. Perfect Knock it down. photo sweet six <laughs> from the folks at On One. This is awesome awesome software and you know I remember back in the early days of um, Photoshop training where people were like I don't use plugins and now we're like you don't use plugins come on you got to use plugins yeah. and this is one of just a couple very short list of must-have plugins you know what's the best way to think about it don't think about it as a plugin think about it as a tool well, it's, it's, it's speeding you up. It's speeding you up. Everybody used to, you know, it, it used to be that way with web programming where people were like, no, I hand-coded this entire website. And we're like, you're an idiot now. Why would you do that? Because there's there's uh, visual web code programming or webbing, web coding. But these days, people are using this. So that's it. Make sure that you sign up for this. Make sure you swing by and see RC over at Google+. Plus. Make sure you swing by my website every once in a while, Cheap Shots, Larry'sCheapShots.com. And uh, we're going to be back next week with the season finale and a ton of big giveaways. Yeah, take a look. See this right here on this computer right here? We're giving that away next episode. The computer? Oh, no, this printer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just clear it up. This printer, next episode. Stick around. We'll see you guys.